Hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at how to cut vinyl on the GraphTech Craft Robo Lite. Uh, you might have watched the last videos and other videos we have done on this, but in this one, we are going to only concentrate on how you cut vinyl. Okay, so first things first vinyl comes in lots and lots of colours, sizes, shapes, and everything else like that. We purchased some vinyl which was done up as a graph, uh, which was done up as a sheet made for the craft robo, and it was hellishly expensive. It was unbelievably expensive. Now, we make signs all day, every day, so we quite often buy in rolls like this, um, and we get them in like a 10 meter roll or anything else like that and it's not as expensive as what they charged us for this stuff. This stuff is the same width but um, they've obviously got a great big roll like we've got and then sliced it off and decided to charge us an absolute bomb for it. So first things we're going to do is we've got the carrier sheet and we've got the vinyl. Now the vinyl goes off the edge of the carrier sheets, which I don't really like. So I'm going to trim this piece of vinyl up and I'm going to trim it up to a five inch size and get it ready to go onto the carrier sheet there. Okay, if that taught us anything, it's taught us that I severely need to get myself a bigger cutter. But anyway, okay, so we've now got the vinyl cut. Uh, it's roughly a five in size. And if you don't know vinyl, if you haven't ever worked with vinyl, what it is, is it's basically made up of three layers. This is the same stuff that's used to do all of the van sign writing. It's used to do where you see lettering on it, kind of like a windows and other things like that. Um, I just had a trim piece. It is. Okay, so we've got a trim piece here, and vinyl's made up of three layers. You've got the paper backing, you've then got glue in the middle, and you've then got vinyl at the top. And it's a bit like sticky back plastic, if you've ever had sticky back plastic as a kid. So the paper underneath, that doesn't do anything. The vinyl on the top, that's very, very sticky. And if you stick vinyl to vinyl, that is mega sticky. It loves to stick to itself. But yeah, you would then apply that onto whatever you're going to be putting your design onto. So there we go, brief overview. Right, so we've got our um, our vinyl cut to the size we want. We remove the protective layer from the carrier sheet. We then place our piece of vinyl onto it, roughly where we want it, and then we stick it down. Now you need to be careful with these carrier sheets because they've got the registration marks there and there and big arrow in the middle and the, the, the cutter will use these to work out where it's going to cut. So then what you do is you load it up into your machine. So you line it up and you get it straight up to the machine and just press enter. And there you go, that's it loaded. So it's basically loaded and ready to go. And you'll see that the machine has gone from load W4 slash carrier to unload media. And if you want to unload the media, you just press enter again and it will unload the media. Okay, so looking up at our computer screen. Okay, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some text and we're gonna keep it really simple. So we just click on text and you can see it's got uh, everything here. Uh, we don't want it to really cut the outline we want it to be something slightly different. What we'll do is we'll do it as a vinyl vault, because that is us. And we'll change the font to our font, which is impact. Um, height of the letters, let's make them five centimeters high. And we'll get it to hold the aspect ratio. And we'll click OK and we'll see where that puts us. So there you go, now you can see we've got the, the letter in there, but it's kind of like floating around in space and what we do is we go to where we would like it to be put and then we click and that's it that's where it is it is really really that simple so if we change up here to the select one 
and there we go that's it so you can see the arrow we've got from our um, the carrier sheet and what we're going to do now is we are going to go to uh, print which is this one up here and we'll click on print but that's going to the wrong one sorry we're going to go to this one here which is the output settings and you can see we've got the graph tech craft robo just check the print settings make sure it's set to a4 which is the size of the carrier sheet and it's set to portrait which is fine so we're going to output it to craft robo and it's saying output graph robo uh, where it's plugged in and everything else like that and then we just click ok and it brings you up with another screen <laughs> Um, so it is the media type it is craft without paper backing I know that um, yeah craft without the paper backing it's got up there the yellow tip but I tend to leave the blue tip on there so we click next um, and it's got the blade adjustment cap and it's asking me to change it over to the yellow one but I'm not going to because I know it works fine with the blue one so then we'll click next again. The design orientation, which is up there, it's asking me about how it's already orientated, but we've already done that. So we click next again. It says load media into the craft robo and check the direction of it. So we've done that. So we click next again. Okay, registration marks. Specify the cutting position. Now this is a good way to find out if um, the computer is actually talking to the craft robo. So you can see here we've got some arrows, and if I change it to use keyboard, um, we've got the arrows on the keyboard. So if I bring you back a bit, you'll be able to see this. So, I'm trying to get it so as you can see it all at the same time. So what we've got is, if you watch this carrier, as I press left, it moves left. As I press right, it moves right. And I can press forward and backwards to load the sheet in. So where I want it to start actually cutting from, I will get it to, and let's just go right a little bit more. So just about there, that's just about right, it's almost up in the top corner, that's where I want it to start cutting from. So once you've got that set, let's bring you back in again, on the screen, you click next again. And then it says start cutting. If cut button is clicked, the cutting confirmation window is displayed. If click OK, then the craft robo starts cutting. So you've got cuts there. Ready to cut. Click OK to start cutting. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you click OK and it will finally start cutting. There you go. So what it's doing now is it's going to feed it backwards and forwards which is why you need to keep it clear all around it while moving you about as it jumps so it's now reading the registration marks that are on that page and working out where the start is and where the end is and this is also why it's really really important that you have a sticky backing sheet okay so now it's working it out side to side and it has stopped. Okay, so there we go. And then uh, obviously on the screen it says unload media, and you press enter, and out it comes. Easy, isn't it? Uh, yeah. If only you could see what was going on backstage here. Uh, I had to redo that three or four times. One, because um, the vinyl wasn't actually stuck well enough onto the carrier sheet, 
so um, I had to redo things, I had to use a squeegee just to press it down and get it in there really really tight. I then changed the screen to outline rather than where we turned off the outline on the last one um, so as it would cut it and yeah in the end it finally did cut it which was good so um, now obviously because I didn't do a box around this there's no weeding box the whole lot is coming off but you can see with the blue bit on there um, that's got it just fine it hasn't gone all the way through which is good and yeah so there we go so that is using it to cut the vinyl so what you would then do is you then take application tape apply it over the top of this lift it off lay it down onto whatever it is you're going to do it and um, yeah it's ideal so how does it compare to other vinyl cutters um, as the hobbyist kind of cutter it's ideal it's perfect if you're trying to run any kind of like a business you would have seen that where I was going through the click next, click next, click next, click next, it was an absolute nightmare. And if you compare that to our other cutter, I can just click once, twice, and it starts cutting. Um, none, none of this kind of like messing about. Everything is all rigged up already, all set, ready to go, and you're there. So there is a lot of faffing around with it. But otherwise, it's not too bad. It does its job, it does what it's meant to do which is what you want and it's made by graph tech so you know it's a good brand so yeah it works fine for cutting vinyl if you only want to cut the odd little piece anything larger than a4 you're screwed really um, and you'll want to get hold of us and ask us to cut it on one of our bigger machines for you but if you only want small things like that to go onto any kind of like products or if you're doing crafting it's ideal it's perfect the great thing for you and as you saw we had done um, the wording on the computer screen you can also use that for doing shapes and there's other bits and pieces okay so thank you for watching we've now come to the end of the video uh, please like please comment please subscribe and in other videos we are doing um, we are going to cut some paper shapes and we are going to do um, the pop-up card. There's a load of samples within the RoboMaster program. And we're going to look at those and we're going to use those. So, yep, thanks again for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. Thank you.